Hello, this is Martha Hines with Living the One Light. So I wanted to make a relatively brief video um, highlighting and focusing on a transit that is really has really been speaking to me in the past uh, week in particular, maybe a couple weeks that I haven't heard anyone else talking about and I would love to hear other people's perspectives on this. Um, so it's very intriguing and it seems very, feels very, really relevant and important for our collective selves. <laughs> um, so that transit is, among other things, um, the part that I'm feeling really drawn to is the fact that Hygieia, which is a goddess asteroid, which is, I'll talk, I'll get a little more into what I know about her. She's in general related to healing and quote unquote hygiene. Among, anyway, I'll say more about that in a second. She, the idea, is coming, is almost conjunct the south node of the moon in Scorpio right now. And she will be conjunct the south node of the moon exactly on August 27th. And then after she conjuncts that conjuncts the south node of the moon at 15 degrees of Scorpio. She will then be opposite <clears throat> Uranus at 18 degrees of Scorpio um, on September 6th. So I'm recording this video on Thursday, August 18th. And I've been feeling the energy of this this transit, you know, like I said, for at least a week, probably two, and certainly will feel it. I'm guessing, you know, I'm when I feel into the energy of it, it feels like it'll be pretty present um, for another few weeks at least. So, yeah, so we have on a bigger level, we have this uh, Uranus about to go retrograde and Saturn um, about to come. Saturn and Uranus about to come close, very, very, very close to an exact square in October. So we're kind of in the time period where, again, I'm also feeling that energetic really starting to build to, um, they're not, they're not, you know, they're not going to come exactly to an exact square, but they will be within one degree of a square in October. And that, that squaring of Uranus and Saturn is extremely significant and was very, very strong, very powerful all of last year. And there were three exact squares last year. And anyway, I can have a lot I can say about that. I'll probably make a separate video just about that part. But so Hygieia coming to be conjunct the South Node and opposite Uranus will also be, is, is, is in this basically a square with Saturn too. So it's this configuration of the south node in Scorpio, Hygieia in the Scorpio, Tor uh, the north node and Uranus in Taurus, and then all of that in a polarity with each other, squared by Saturn in Aquarius. And Saturn is also going retrograde and is going to go direct at 18 degrees, 35 minutes of Aquarius, um, and in October as well. Okay. <laughs> so that, those are all these moving parts, um, that feel like they're, they're all talking to me all at the same time. So what I feel called to drop into is, you know, lots of people are talking about the Saturn Uranus square, certainly, and the Saturn squaring the nodes, but I haven't had anybody heard anybody mention Hygieia playing into all of this. So first, I guess I will start with my sense or a certain aspect of what I'm feeling around the Uranus Saturn square, because also a lot has been coming up in my prayers about that, just that dynamic. And then I'll bring in all these other parts, especially including the Hygieia part. So among many other things, the Saturn Uranus square is the spirit world has been 
speaking to me a lot about the need to let go of stories, the need to release into the wisdom of the divine. So Uranus, the wisdom of our bodies, Uranus in Taurus, and the wisdom of ourselves as the earth, again, Uranus in Taurus. And just, again, Uranus, just the wisdom of ourselves as source itself, as the divine itself. Then we have Saturn squaring that need for us to come into this freedom of ourselves as the divine, the, the wisdom of ourselves as the divine. And Saturn is a, a, a yin energy that can is helpful in bringing us form to things, right? And so Saturn in Aquarius is actually, quote unquote, ruled by Uranus, but is an interesting contrast of archetypes that is again highlighted by that square to Uranus, but is even contained within that Saturn in Aquarius signature by itself. So it's the, it's this mix of our need for structure, our need for a very gentle yet firm way of being held so that we can be what we are meant to be here as beings of the divine, as beings of the earth. We need structure. We need, you know, real life on the ground, practical support. And at the same time, Saturn in its most extreme forms can be oppressive structure. So that Saturn in Aquarius actually in a way almost gives us the best of both worlds. That's, I mean, that's one way I can think of it. It's it's giving us form yet supported with the intelligence of the divine. So it's really the intelligence of the divine infusing how we how we how things take form. And when Uranus is then squaring that, beautiful. <laughs> Uranus in Taurus, one way to think of it is that it's actually the intelligence of the earth, the intelligence of our bodies working with the intelligence of the divine creating form. I hope this is making sense. So, I mean, actually that's just striking me as I'm saying it, that's really cool, is that we are getting this, these, these energetics together are giving us an opportunity to tap into that wisdom that comes through our bodies, comes through our physical beings, our earth beings, as we are co-creating with source and we're co-creating with the earth and we're co-creating with ourselves as beings of the divine to create these structures that are so needed and so necessary in our world. Okay, so, so and I think this is more for a separate video that I'll make next week. Um, but I'll just touch on it. So again, one of the big messages coming through in my praying in the last couple of days is this idea that we need to let go of the stories. And one of the really key aspects of letting go of stories is that Saturnian energies, again, can be associated with forms and structures that we have known and therefore stories that we have lived, right? Ideas that we feel like, they, the, the shoulds that we think are true. The stories we tell ourselves about who we are, our identity, our place in society, um, how we should structure our lives, the rules that we think are needed, et cetera. And something that the spirit world is just, saying is so key and important is that we have ways of regularly releasing from those storylines so that we can then come back into the reality of ourselves as the divine literally and so the the, the divine can be what is moving through us as we create form and as we create structure so again i'll make a separate video about that next week because I have a lot more I want to say about that. Um, and my my next soul wisdom gathering, which is going to be on 
September 17th is going to be focused on just that, the, the releasing of the stories, let go of the stories. That's, that's the theme that the spirit world wants me to focus on at that soul wisdom gathering, which you're all very welcome to come to. Um, it's, I try to make it very accessible for people. That's uh, $25 if you want to pay just to come to that one, or if you want access to all of them, the one that the ones that I've already held, which is now three, I've already held three and I have the recordings of all of those available. Um, if you want to come on a regular basis and have access to all of them, you can join my new monthly membership at, for $22 a month and have the recordings for all of them. So if you miss the first three, you can join that membership and have them all for $22. <laughs> um, and then join me for the one on September 17th. If you're available live, you can come live. And if you can't come live, you can watch the video anytime you want indefinitely. So that's always, always available. I'm gonna be doing that every month. And I really love meeting people at those gatherings. I love hearing your stories. I love hearing from you and meeting you and getting to witness your the beauty that you are because so many amazing humans on this planet <laughs> so um so yeah so i'll say more about that in a video next week um but then i want to drop into this hygia component too so we have that uranus saturn square happening which happens to be with the nodes of the moon too uranus on the north node and saturn squaring the nodes of the moon and so just you know on a really simple level when we add in the the nodes of the moon it's adding in an element of our personal and collective soul intention is very strongly tied into this dynamic that i was just talking about with the uranus saturn square so it's you know, our, our, our collective and individual soul intention is just very keyed in, very tuned in. This is, you know, really um, a key and important dynamic for us all as a, as a world, um, as a planet, as a humans, as a all living things, all things, <laughs> all of us. Um, and then we have Hygieia in Scorpio, currently at, I think it's 12 degrees Scorpio, um, the day I'm recording this, but it, it will come to the south node of the moon on August 27th at 15 degrees of Scorpio, and then will be exactly opposite Uranus at 18 degrees Scorpio, with Uranus at 18 degrees of Taurus. And of course, in that mean, in the meantime, it's also squaring Saturn. Okay, so like I said in the beginning of the video, Hygieia has to do with um, she's an asteroid goddess, which I haven't seen a lot written about. And so I'm speaking from what I have read about her, and also sort of the the beginnings of what I get in my praying about her energetic and so i would love input from any of you who know you know as much or more about or know anything about IG. i would love to hear get your your thoughts um because i feel like she's an asteroid that we're still learning a lot about so the aspects of of Hygieia that pop up a lot for me when i look at my own life, when I look at the transits, when I look at clients' charts, when I look at friends' charts, you know, over the past two, three years, when I've really sat with who is Hygieia and what is Hygieia, here are the things that come up. Number one, she's very, very, very prominent in charts of people who identify as a healer in some way. So like she's on my ascendant, conjunct my moon and can, and, um, yeah, she's conjunct my ascendant and my moon in my first house. So she's right there in my identity, my self. She's very, very prominent. And I, and she's exactly opposite my sun and squaring my Neptune. Okay. So in my chart, my personal chart, Hygieia is very strong. 
and I identify very strongly as a healer in various ways. I wanted to be a doctor when I was a child and all those things. Okay, that's really common for hygiene to be really prominent in the charts of doctors, nurses, medical practitioners, therapists, you know, all kinds of healing type people. Um, number two, when I watched her in transits, what I noticed is she's very often very present in kind of uncanny ways when people are dealing with certain kinds of health issues or healing issues. And it seems like her energy brings in healing. Um, and so when, so she's, you know, definitely related to healing, <laughs> definitely related to health. And I'm sure there's many, many more layers. Oh, one other thing that's really key, feels really important about her that I feel called to say is she's also associated with uh, the image of snakes and specifically the idea that, um, the idea of poison being used for medicine or poison being transmuted into a healing, a healing substance of some kind. So the idea that, you know, things that we think could be very dangerous could in certain circumstances actually be the thing that you need or the thing that saves you or the thing that's very healing. So I feel like that's, that's something I'm just keeping in the back of my mind as I'm observing Hygieia. Just feels very powerful. Okay, so currently we have Hygieia in Scorpio coming to conjunct the south node of the moon. <laughs> so this very, very feels, you know, very mm, resonant with that idea that Hygieia is connected to what I just said about the notion that poison sometimes can be the medicine. Because Scorpio and the South Node, and especially the South Node in Scorpio, can be very related to releasing stuff. We don't need stuff from the underworld, stuff that's like needs to go, ready to go. So there can be so much just moving things through, moving old karmic soul level stuff out, purging things. Uh, eliminating. And so to have Hygieia in Scorpio coming to the South Node, it's, I mean, I can think of this in various ways, but one, one element of it for me is absolutely that Hygieia is present to be a transmuter of that poison. Like if we're, if we're releasing old karmic, maybe traumatic things, it might hurt. It might be emotionally or even physically difficult, but she's there holding a light, holding this intention of healing, holding space that this is a healing moment and just bringing that, that healing reality to the whole experience. So I think that's just something, yeah, to, that I offer to you to, to sit with. And again, I would love your 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 thoughts on that. Um, and I also feel like Hygieia on the south node of Scorpio, she's bringing this healing intention. I also feel the energetic of it, just giving an extra sort of boost, an extra pumping out in a healing way of, you know, let's get rid of these toxins. Like if, if Hygieia is sort of like a doctor, or a, a healer, then she might be there holding space that is, you know, really, um, she's helping, like she knows what you need to release. And she's just there holding that for you and helping you to release even more. So again, potentially very beautiful. Um, and then the last thing I want to say about this is, so she's, going to be on the south node she's also going to be opposite uranus so uranus again is the intelligence of the divine 
and Uranus and Taurus is the intelligence of ourselves as the divine, as our bodies, and as the earth, and as these earth body beings that we are. So to have Hygieia opposite Uranus feels to me like the coming together of this healing, releasing intention with the intelligence of the divine as earth and as bodies. And <clears throat> that is a really, really powerful combination. <laughs> it, that holds so much potential for us to kind of lock in to this knowing that we have in our bodies and this knowing that we we know more than anyone or anyone anything could what is right for ourselves what is right for our bodies what is right for our healing what is right in this in each and every moment so and it's also a call for us to really get it that we are earth bodies and that our bodies and our earth beings are divinely intelligent. They literally are. Like I've said this in, in previous videos, you know, if you put your hand near a hot stove, your hand is going to recoil far before your brain says anything to you. So our hand, our bodies have this innate intelligence simply because they do. Like it's just an indisputable fact. So we all know that. And despite that, we all ignore our bodies, <laughs> we ignore the intelligence of our bodies. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. I don't want to speak for you. But like I said in a recent video, I recently did that and it wasn't good. It was not, it was not helpful to my well-being. So, you know, it was again a reminder to me of um needing to really listen to the intelligence of my body and take it seriously. Um, in my in my case, that ignoring of my body resulted in a, a health situation, like not like terrible, but uh you know, something where it was like I got, oh, got it. <laughs> this is what can happen if we don't listen to, you know, the first two, three, four times our body says something. Sometimes um, we can have something then we need to, you know, ac acutely that shows up in our body that needs to be healed. So I also feel like Hygieia coming there can, can be an extra emphasis that that is true too, that, you know, if we, if we ignore that intelligence of our bodies as the divine, one natural thing that can happen is that the body will then talk louder and you know, you know how that all goes. So, right. But if we come back to that intelligence of ourselves as bodies, as our, and the intelligence of ourselves as the earth and our, the intelligence of ourselves actually is our most pure natural healer that we each are our own healer and we each actually innately are Hygieia, we each innately are each of these archetypes. We are all of them. So we are all healers in one way or another. It's just true. Um, we know ourselves, our bodies know ourselves so well. <laughs> the, the divine knows ourselves and we are the divine and our bodies are the divine. Yeah, so that's what I feel called to say about this conjunction opposition and square <laughs> this this configuration coming up with Hygieia on the south node opposite um Uranus and squared by Saturn and again I would love to hear any of your thoughts on all of this um and I'll just say also briefly that I am going to be I'm holding a workshop next Wednesday, August 24th on the archetype of Virgo and dropping into ourselves as uh, temples to the divine or temples of the divine, literally. I would love to have you at that workshop. That's going to be just before the Virgo new moon. And I did it, my last video was 
more about that. So um, please listen to that if you are interested. Um, it's going to be a really, really beautiful, intimate space to really get it in ourselves. What is this temple that is me? What, you know, you, <laughs> each of us, what does it smell like, look like, feel like? How am I, you know, who am I as this temple? And how can, how do I want to honor myself? And then the following Wednesday, the August 31st, right around the time of this um, Hygieia conjunct the South Node and opposite Uranus, uh, I'm going to hold my first deep peace and healing circle, which is really in line with actually this Hygieia conjunct the South Node opposite Uranus configuration, because it's it's going to be a channeled healing session essentially where you can come and just turn off your video and just be present and be be held by the spirit world and um just totally let go completely relax completely let your nervous system you know fully come into the parasympathetic nervous system state which is what we need it's the opposite of the fight or flight so it's really letting our adrenal glands relax and um, getting whatever kind of healing or sense of deep peace that we each need in that moment. So that uh, that's going to be August 31st. And all of these things that I, that I do are recorded. So you can, you can come to them live or you can sign up and then just, you know, listen to the recordings later. So those are the two next things I have coming up. But then uh, in September, I have various things happening. Also, the September 17th um, Soul Wisdom Gathering that I mentioned earlier. And then an also really special September 14th with my friend Arena Burrell. I'll be doing a workshop on Diana, the goddess and the asteroid. Super, super beautiful and special workshop. We're very excited about that. So please see. Um, my website, livingtheonelight.com to sign up for my newsletter so you can get information about any of those things that you're interested in. I'm also holding one-on-one -on -one sessions and ongoing healing uh, work or mentoring. Yeah, and I'm just here so, to uh, support you in your soul journey in whatever way is right for you. So don't hesitate to reach out anytime. Living the One Light at gmail.com and again living the one light.com is my website so thank you so much for listening and i will see you soon